Hey, how's it going? The Microsoft research team just put out a paper about ORCA, their 13 billion parameter model that learns to imitate the reasoning process of LFMs. LFMs are large foundation models. There's two important things to know. ORCA's base model is LLAMA. In the paper, they mention that ORCA, built upon the LLAMA model family, retains many of its constraints, as well as the common limitations of other large language models. The other thing that you need to know is that ORCA has been trained on data that simulate zero-shot setting with standard prompts. The team sets the foundation by saying that our research indicates that learning from step-by-step -step explanations, whether these are generated by humans or more advanced AI models, is a promising direction to improve model capabilities and skills. Before we dive into this, it's interesting to understand how long they trained it for. In the paper, they say that we trained Orca on 20 NVIDIA A100 GPUs, and then it took 160 hours to train Orca on Flan 5M, and then an additional 40 hours to continue training on Flan 1M, which we're going to be discussing here, so that's 200 hours. In terms of understanding the time span, if you want to talk about weeks, they say it took two weeks and three weeks respectively to collect data from GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4. They're going to release the weights soon. They say that they're working with their legal team to publicly release a diff on the model weights in accordance with Llama's release policy, and I know that once that gets released, a lot of people are going to be testing it. I love this name, Orca killer whales, the apex predators that eat sea lions, dolphins, and gray whale calves, and on some rare occasions, attack adult gray whales and even blue whales. Seems pretty symbolic in terms of the Microsoft team setting the stage for what they want to do on the chessboard. The orca results are more important than you think and we'll talk about why. Let's go through the paper now and discuss the important takeaways. Performance is obviously important to better understand how orca compares to the competition. In this screenshot, you'll see three different prompt collections. It's based on a variety of skills and real world tasks. You see Vicuña, Awesome, and Wizard LM prompts. To make it simple, Orca beat out Vicuña. What about more examples here? So at the top, you see Aqua Rat. If you don't know what that is, that's algebra question answering with Rationale's dataset. This dataset consists of about 100,000 algebraic word problems with natural language rationales. In terms of the results when looking at this, the important takeaways are that Orca performs on par with Da Vinci. Compared to Vicuña, Orca outperforms on every category with 42% relative improvement on average. And then here's the important part. Orca still significantly lags GPT-4. The most important takeaway from here is that all of the models are significantly lower than human performance across all tasks. What about big bench results? So in the paper, they mention reasoning capabilities. They use AGI eval and then something called big bench hard, BBH. This table right here, it shows the zero shot performance comparison of Orca against baseline models on big bench hard with standard zero shot prompting. The big takeaway from here is that Orca, it performs marginally better than ChatGPT 3.5 on aggregate across all tasks. It's essentially the same, right? You're gonna see on the bottom right, 49.7 versus on the left side, 48.9. It's pretty much the same. It's very close. However, Orca significantly lags GPT-4. That's what we mentioned before. This is very important to understand that it's still not close to GPT-4, but it does outperform Vicuña. According to the metrics here, it's 113.7%. And if this type of stuff interests you and you want to dive into it, there's a Google project called Big Bench with contributions from OpenAI and other big orgs. They've crowdsourced a lot, over 200 highly diverse text tasks from answering scientific questions to predicting protein interacting sites to measuring self-awareness. Let's go into some of the stuff that mentions how the Microsoft team trained it. How did Orca learn? So really going back to what they were mentioning in the paper, Orca learns from rich signals from GPT-4, including explanation traces, step-by-step -step thought processes, and other complex instructions, guided by teacher assistance from ChatGPT. So to clarify this piece right here, Orca is mentored by ChatGPT. It's a combination of 3.5 and 4, and we're gonna get into some of the specifics right here. Explanation tuning. And this chart essentially explains it. At the bottom, you see Orca, bottom right. You're gonna see the teacher is ChatGPT, and then you see 5M, and then GPT-4, 1M. What does that mean? Well, they sampled 5 million user queries from Flan V2 to collect ChatGPT responses, and then they further sampled 1 million instructions from the 5 million dataset to collect GPT-4 responses. So what is this talking about? 
It's basically demonstrating how GPT as a teaching assistant is being used to train Orca and it's helping it with progressive learning. There's two parts to this that are really important to understand. It's instruction tuning versus explanation tuning. Here's instruction tuning. It's often referred to as vanilla tuning and it often uses input response pairs with short responses. This isn't considered to be as good as something like explanation tuning because it's limited. Now let's go into explanation tuning. What does that look like? So in contrast, this method, system instructions in this regard, it can be used to provide guidance to the model on how to behave and respond. It can specify the tone, task, format, and limitations of the model's responses. So what's one difference here? You see the system instruction it starts off by saying, you are an AI assistant, and then it goes on to giving it the tasks, the instructions, the prompts. For anyone who's been using GPT or any type of chatbot, they found that when you give the AI a persona, it tends to give more accurate responses. That's essentially what this is. So here's my quick thoughts on this. One of the papers that I thought about before was DeepMind's chinchilla paper. It was called Training Compute Optimal Large Language Models. So when they found new data scaling laws, also called the Chinchilla or Hoffman Scaling Laws, for data optimal LLMs. Basically, the big takeaway from not only this, but from this entire field of what people are studying when it's talking about optimal LLMs is that a Chinchilla Optimal GP3 would be around 20 billion parameters. So when you hear something like Orca performing somewhat pretty well, I mean, on par with GPT 3.5 at 13 billion parameters, I mean, it's not as crazy as you'd think because a lot of people have found that that may be a good range. So what's going to happen next? We'll probably start seeing more and more papers that discuss results from testing their models that are testing very specific tasks with less than 15 billion parameters. Maybe you'll see more really highly refined results from a model that has less than 10, then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You see where the trend is going here? Because it's really talking about fine-tuning smaller models for specific tasks. It kind of sounds like AI agents. I mean, I don't want to go into the whole AutoGPT discussion here, but one big aspect of AutoGPT, it's AI agents. AI agents that can perform tasks very well. So everyone's trying to figure out what's the perfect combination of parameters plus base model that you train it with? And what's the environment that you need to test it in? How long can you train it for? Because we're trying to steer away from just brute force training methodologies, trying to get more into the mindset of becoming a reasoning engine. And then after that, it's running these types of models on every type of device, portable ones, making it cheaper, cost-effective, more accessible. The final thing that I wanna talk about is open source LFMs. What are the rules on using IO data, input-output data from OpenAI's GPT-4 to improve a baseline trained model? For anyone that's looked at their terms of use, which it's probably only a handful of people in the entire world, there's a part of it that mentions you may not use output from the services to develop models that compete with OpenAI, which is why you're seeing a lot of restrictions from other projects because they can't use it for commercial purposes. Yet if they're entering the open source game, they're kind of exploiting public data for financial gain as well. I mean, it's a smart business move, right? But if you're really on a certain side of this, open source versus commercial, or maybe you're in the middle, this is gonna be a debate that keeps on popping up throughout the years. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. And if you're interested in diving into more of these types of AI papers, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.